it's Betsy and today we have a super fun video and it is a collab video with one of my friends here on YouTube. Now, Kelly Rittenberger from Keep Beauty Real. If you've never seen her, she is absolutely amazing. She is a professional hair and makeup artist and her idea on YouTube is to keep beauty real. Real relatable, real honest, and I absolutely adore her. We talk all the time on Marco Polo and we've never gotten a chance to collab yet. So I was like, well, why don't we do this video? The other day I was watching Hannah from Smoky Glow. I will link her as well. And she did a video that she had seen on TikTok, which was makeup I would recommend to someone I hate. Now, I don't know if it would be to someone I hate, but maybe a friend of me, maybe someone who was mildly irritating. And I had to think about this quite a lot. Now, most of these products other than one, I don't own anymore. Because if I find a makeup product that doesn't work for me, I don't keep it around. I mean, I just don't have time for that. And, you know, so we will insert pictures to let you know what they are. And I kind of went through and order and chose pretty much a full face of makeup. I don't think I'm missing anything, but I did want to let you know. So if you see me looking down, it is because I have notes since I don't have the actual products in front of me. But number one would be an eye primer. Now the eye primer that I would recommend is the ABH eye primer. Now, for the most part, this product isn't the worst. It does its job of priming your eyes, evening out, skin tone, that type of thing. But where it gets to be something I would recommend because it's mildly irritating is one, the consistency of it is so darn liquidy. It is the messiest, messiest application out of anything. If you don't screw your lid on tight, you will and turn the tube upside down, it will get eye primer everywhere. It is such a thin consistency and with that squeezy tube, it is almost impossible to get out an even coat and it's just the biggest pain in the hiney. So if it were someone that was asking me for advice who I really didn't like, I'd be like, hey, try this one. Because it's not the worst. So it wouldn't seem like I'm like, hey, I really don't like you, but it's really difficult to use. Okay, number two would be eyeshadow palettes. And the eyeshadow palette I would recommend is the ColourPop Candyland. Now I ordered this because whenever I saw these pictures online, it looked pretty. Now it didn't look like it had the most pigmentation, but it still looked like it had some. They lied. This was the blandest eyeshadow palette I have ever seen. They performed okay, but if you're my skin tone, they didn't show up. If you're darker, they didn't show up. So I definitely would be like, hey, here's your eyeshadow palette. Plus there wasn't anything real special about it. Like I expect for Candyland to really amp it up. Like, you know, have a little bit of texture in there because you've got gumdrops and things like that in Candyland. And this was definitely lacking in all of those departments. So that would be one I would recommend. Number three is mascara, and that would be the NYX Double Stacked. Now, if you've never seen this product, be glad that you haven't. Now, this is a product that I truly despise. Okay, so it has like the little fibers in it to make your lashes look long and luscious and thick. But those fibers, one, irritate your eyes like nobody's business. I mean, they are, Mm, so bad and when you put it on your eyelashes they are so clumpy and just gross looking I can't even explain it I mean it almost because we've done construction like on our house and stuff like that it almost felt like getting fiberglass crystals in your eyes I truly did not like this product and this would be a one I would recommend to someone I really really didn't like because it'd be like hey here you go 
let's irritate your eyes because no one likes their eyes to be irritated. And I was like, mm -mm, no ma'am, this is the worst mascara I think I have ever tried. And I have tried, I have tried a ton of bad, bad mascaras, but this one was icing on the cake and, and there was a primer too, an eyelash primer with the same thing. Oh no, 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 never again never again. Plus, even if you could get it to work, your eyelashes look like spider legs and who looks cute with spider lashes? Not me. Okay, next up, this one might shock you and that is face primer. And what I chose for that is the Benefit Professional. Okay, so let me tell you about my skin. I have normal skin. You know, I'm 37 years old, I've had Botox, but I don't have a lot of skin issues. But whenever I put a primer on this face, whenever it's got silicone in it, it wants to beat up, it wants to ball. I don't know how it's supposed to help hide any pores. You can try to do a little bit, but it always did it to me. And I was like, I tried and I tried and I tried because it was recommended all over YouTube and I was like, why do people like this? This is bad. I mean, nobody wants to look like they're, you know, peeling from getting a sunburn and that's what it did. So, I would definitely recommend that. Number five is foundation and that is the Maybelline Superstay. Now, I know a lot of people love this foundation, but it was not for me, sis. Okay, so let's start off with the shade range of it. Okay, shade range looked pretty decent. I ended up buying like five different shades in this foundation because every single one of them oxidized and made me look like an Oompa Loompa. Nobody wants to look like an Oompa Loompa unless you're going to a Halloween party that is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory themed. Come on now. And I mean, literally, I went so much lighter than my skin tone because I was like, okay, maybe something light won't oxidize because the foundation itself didn't look the worst on the skin. It was just like, and it wasn't like an immediate oxidation. It was like, as it dried down, you could see yourself getting oranger and oranger. And I was like, uh-uh. No, I could wear it on camera. I think I ended up finish off one of the bottles of it after I gave away the rest of it, but because I could fake it on camera, but no, I would never wear that out of the house. It was bad, bad. Okay, number six is concealer. Okay, so I just explained my age. I am 37 years old. Tarte shape tape, okay. One, it is a full coverage concealer. The problem with it is, is that the original shape tape is so dry. Like, you wanna look like you have the Saharan desert under your eyes, put that on. It is the worst. And like, I would powder it and I would, and I was like, I tried, I don't know how many different things with it, but nothing, 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 nothing made my eyes look good. Ever. You can fake it on camera, but my goodness, in person, mm -mm. it's like, here, take some water. I look so dehydrated. Never again. Next up is bronzer. Now, this one I had to go back into the makeup memories because around 2008 or so, Victoria's Secrets had bronzer. Now, I bought one of these because I used to love buying everything from Victoria's Secrets. Their very sexy perfume was my favorite. My husband wore very sexy for him. And I bought this bronzer. And I was like, this is going to be amazing because, you know, earlier 2000s, we thought we needed tons of bronzer. Let me tell you, I look like a freaking copper penny. It was so shiny. I mean, it looks like a highlighter powder now that like when I look back and remember it, it looked like I put highlighter on my face and it was copper. It was not a good, nice, warm or cool bronzer. It was straight up metallic copper. 
copper. No one needs to look like copper like that. No one. Unless you're dressing up as Abraham Lincoln or like the penny for Halloween. But yeah, no. Bad. Bad, bad, bad. Okay. Number eight is blush. Now this one was a little bit harder for me to think about. And then I remembered cover girl blushes, the cheekers, these little single shade things. And the part of the reason, one of the things that was so bad about them is one, they had no pigmentation to them whatsoever. But I mean, again, I wore them, you know, 2000s, early 2000s. And so, you know, who actually wore any color on their face unless it was orange? You know, we liked that really bronze skin, but we looked like pumpkins. But this blush, it was the chalkiest, and then it was no pigment. It was like the weirdest thing. And then you had those little tiny brushes to try to put it on, and then it didn't apply evenly. And yeah, no. Like, and I think they still make and sell these. Does anybody still buy them? Are they any good? I think I'm scarred for life from these. Like, I'm, mm -mm, I won't touch CoverGirl blush. Nope, no ma'am. Next up, this is a newer product. This is my highlighter that I would recommend. And this is the Makeup by Mario Expensive Highlighter. This is what it looks like. It's clear. It feels like Vaseline, okay? So this is what it looks like. And it is like sticky like lip gloss. It really doesn't dry down. Now it does make you look wet if that's what you want. But if you wear your hair down, see? My hair is stuck to my finger because it's like lip gloss on your cheek. It doesn't dry down. It, it has a natural wetness. I guess that's a plus, but I'd be better off putting Vaseline all over my face. I mean, I just, like, I don't know. If you can hear that stickiness, that tack, it, it haunts my dreams. I still haven't decluttered it yet because it was expensive. I think it was like 20 bucks. Why did I spend 20 bucks on this? I don't know. I don't know. I don't like it though. I mean, it's just bad, 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 bad. No. Okay. Next step is setting spray. Now this one took me a minute to decide on and I had to choose the Ciate London Everyday Vacay. One of the things with it was the sprayer is so darn aggressive, like the mist on it. If you're having a good makeup day and you use that, you won't be anymore, sis. It's going to be running down your face. You're going to cry those black mascara tears because that it was just like super aggressive. And if you weren't prepared for it, I mean, it was like a shock to the system. The bottle design of it was just bad so bad okay next up is brows okay and again this is one that i ordered i think back in 2016 2017 bh cosmetics has the automatic eyebrow pencil okay so the thing with it is is one it's one of those shaped like a triangle okay those aren't my favorite to begin with but i can deal with them because i've tried them from other brands but this one this one was so hard and it drug so bad. Like there was nothing smooth about the consistency. Like it looked like, like when you try to swatch it out, like if you were using like an ink pen, even that was smoother, but like an ink pen that's kind of dry where it's like dragging your skin. That's what it did to your eyebrows. I literally, literally, this is no lie, used it on my eyebrows one day and it pulled out an eyebrow hair because of the consistency. No. No. Again, the shape of it is horrible. Horrible. I hate that shape like nobody knows because you can't get a good pretty brow with that. I like a little bit more definition to my eyebrows and there was no getting any definition with that. None whatsoever. And it just didn't work. And it plucked your eyebrows. Maybe I should have tried it down here and then I wouldn't have to go get them waxed all the time. 
Hmm, that would have been an idea. Okay, and next up is face powder. So I thought about this and thought about this and thought about this. And then I remembered, okay. So I love the collaborator on this, Candy Johnson. She is absolutely phenomenal. She is amazing. I love her to death. Too faced at this point, I could take it or leave it. But at that point, I really did love the brand. Well, they came out with a banana setting powder. It was banana pudding scented. Look at the color of that. Okay, so Candy Johnson is not a dark lady. And she was like, I use this. How do you use this powder under your eyes? One, it oxidized and it like grabbed on. I remember and like I had, they had accidentally sent me two of them. So I gave one of them to Nadia and Nadia used it under her eyes. It was the most atrocious thing ever because it was like, it absorbed the concealer. So it looked at that point, looked cakey and it was, it, it was yellow. Not like a true banana powder, but it was almost like a mustardy yellow. It smelled good. That was a plus. But everything else about it was just bad. So bad. And it had like these little speckles in it too. And it was supposed to be like tone correcting. The only tone that was correcting is if you were a Marge Simpson, you know. You want to look yellow? Get you some of that banana powder. Banana pudding powder. It kind of did look like that now that I think about it. You know how whenever you're making like pudding, like vanilla pudding or banana pudding, and you have your liquids in your bowl and you got go to start mixing in your powder where it isn't mixed together, but it's like absorbed the liquid so it kind of looks cakey and clumpy. That's what it looked like on the skin. I, I mean, I cannot. It was so bad. Okay, number 13 is lipstick, okay? Lipstick is, I had to think and I had to think, but then I remembered Kylie Lip Kits. Now, I may get hate for this, but, and I know a lot of people love them, but Kylie has the driest liquid lipstick formula. And if you're someone like me with perpetually chapped lips that kind of peel because I can't quit messing with them, I will pick up my lips. It is the worst thing on your lips ever. It definitely creates a butthole lip, which is not flattering for anybody. Let's get it. It is not cute. Not cute at all. And even if your lips were beautiful and moisturized, and even if you have like beautiful lip filler, <laughs> it looked like you sucked on a lemon. I mean, it made your lips look that tight, that tight. And I mean, they were just bad. So, so bad. And I mean, I'm sure that there are other products that I can think about too, but these were, like my number ones that I would recommend to someone that I just don't care for, you know? You irritate me, let me irritate you with some products. Now, remember, this is all in good fun. So if any of these products you love, that's great. Because what works for me may not work for you. And what works for you may not work for me. Just remember, this is all in jest, this is fun. Uh, don't forget to make sure to check out Kelly's channel. She is amazing. I think you'll like her. And if you came over from Kelly's channel, hi, welcome. But I guess that's it. So we shall see y'all later. Bye.